in the first letter to the church at Corinth. I remember well when I was privileged to be at Corinth, my first journey, first time abroad. And then I remember the second time I was in Corinth and the revelation God gave me there. Oliver, you were with me at that time. Edwin was with me. Thomas was with me. Reverend Morgan. And we were standing there near where Paul was preaching and had quite an experience. And uh, God gave us a wonderful revelation right there while we were at Corinth. Now, the first writing to that church, the first chapter, the 10th verse, The Lord speaks. Now I beseech you, brethren, that is, those that love the Lord, those who are redeemed, those who have met Jesus and have known him and that he is real and that he is the Christ and the Lord of all, it's to those, the brethren, the sisters in the Lord, in the kingdom, the church, those who have been bought by a great price. I beseech you, I call to your attention, I'd like for you to note, will you hear? He said, I beseech you, I call to you, I implore you, I beseech you, I love you, I invite you to hear what? Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I have something to say. I have something to speak. And I want you to know it's very worthwhile. I want you to know what he's going to say is of supreme truth. It is of a high, wonderful word that we need to meditate on and recognize and understand it in our heart. Not just in the mind, but in our heart. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, who's now at the right hand of God. He's still there, been there for over 1,900 years. He said, I have something to say, that ye all speak the same thing. Now that... That is a tremendous order. That's a great request. Now the Lord says, I've got something for the church to note. Something for the church of God to recognize. And to be able to understand what he has to declare. I beseech you that ye all, that means you, all of us, everyone in the church, all the people that love Jesus... All the people that love God, he said, there's one thing I want to bring to your attention that's very important, and that is that ye all speak the same thing. I heard Jerry Falwell say some time ago on television, he said, you get 13 men in a room in a meeting, and you've got 13 different ideas. Now, wherever you have 13 carnal men, you sure have 13 different ways and ideas at times. Carnality has a lot of fuss and trouble in it, death in it, darkness in it, and defeat in it. But he said here, I beseech you that ye all speak the same thing. Now that's not possible unless we are inwardly cleansed from this old carnal nature unless we're truly entirely sanctified he said we are to speak the same thing you get in a Sunday school class and this one has this idea and this one over here has this idea and another one and if you're not careful we'll do more damage than we do good if you have any carnality in anybody in the Sunday school class look out It'll, it'll, it'll harm things And it'll defeat the purpose of Christ and the purpose of the church. That's why you want to be very careful. You know, we have Sunday school, but we've got to be sure that the Sunday school is in divine order. We've got to be sure that the class is in divine order. 
And we've got to be sure that the teacher and the people are one. Or it'll just hurt things. It'll keep the people from being saved that ought to be saved. If it's not exactly what the Lord wants. Carnality ruins and destroys. He said that ye all speak the same thing. All of us. Now everyone that walks with Jesus and is holy unto God will have one thing to say. And there will be in perfect agreement. As perfect agreement when Jesus' children, God's elect, are together. There's no differences. He said that you all speak the same thing. Now can't you see why we're in great trouble in the world? Can't you see why denominations are broken off here and it's split over here and here this little group, they couldn't get along and that little group, they're going there and this little group over here, they think this. Oh, how do you think that grieves the God of the heart of God, the heart of Jesus? God is so grieved. God is more grieved with man than I can tell you. He is so grieved with the church, the professed church. The greatest power that ever fell on me, one of the greatest times, and probably one of the greatest powers that ever fell on me, was when I told Homer Pumphrey, God is grieved. Yes, sir. I made a statement to him in August of 1942 that I'm convinced and persuaded that very few, if any, in the world today had all God wanted them to have, doing all God wanted them to do. And he said, do you mean to tell me? And he named over religious leaders. And I simply said, the Holy Spirit is grieved. And that instant is when the power hit that room until he thought we were going to be translated. And he was frightened. And if God, if that power would fall in this room, you would say, Brother Helm, you've told me, but I hadn't any conception of it. I couldn't comprehend what you were telling me at all. God is so grieved with man. See, the church at Corinth had a lot of difficulty. And there were a lot of situations involved. That's why he had a lot to say to the church at Corinth. But he said that we in the church are to be so inwardly committed to Christ so entirely sanctified that our speaking is the same. It's together. That ye all speak the same thing. Now, I've never heard this preached on in my life. I've never heard it preached on. I've never heard it exhorted on by anyone, anywhere I've ever been. But this is what God has shown me for years. That we're all to speak the same thing. Someone says, well, that can't be. Well, it can't be in the Lord. Amen. It can't be in the carnal nature. It can't be in the earthly man and the evils of the heart because the heart is deceitful above all things and it's desperately wicked. That heart must be cleansed of this old black nature, this old dark nature, this evil nature, this thing within us that we're born with, this iniquity that we mortals were born with. We must get it cleansed out of us. I'm taken out of us by the power of the blood and the holy truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, I beseech you. I call to order. I call to your attention that you all, all of you, speak the same thing. This has seldom been. But yet it's God's will. You say, well, how can it be? It's through the grace of God. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's by the Holy Ghost. It's by the truth of Jesus. He is the word. He is the truth. And he's able. Oh, that touches me. He's able if we'll follow him. Now, the only way that you can ever become one are those that's directly behind him. You'll find everyone that's behind Jesus following. They're all one. They all speak the same thing. They've been with the Galilean. They speak the way he does. They have the mind of Christ. The only ones that are one and speak the same thing is the individuals that's right behind Jesus. He said, follow me. So the only way we know what to do to be one is just to be right behind him. And everyone that's right behind Jesus, that's in obedience and prayer. 
and supplication and trusting. They are one. That ye all speak the same thing. So the language is just behind Jesus. Just after Christ. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We found his word comes into us and we're in perfect agreement. That ye all speak the same thing. All carnality is against this. Carnality wants to make a place for division. Carnality wants to make a place for argumentation. Yes, sir. People love arguments. Anyone that loves argument, the heart is yet carnal. Argumentation grieves the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, that hurts my heart. Oh, that really hurts me. Do you get that? It hurts my heart like when I go into a room, they have a television on, there's a fist fight on, there's a price fight, and I can't stand it. It hurts me. Two men banging one another with their fist. The body, the temple of God. <coughs> Why, if you're sensitive at all, you can't hardly stand it. Because it grieves God. Grieves the Holy Spirit. Carnal people like it. Spiritual people are hurt with it. I say, Brother Hell, I liked you pretty well till now. <laughs> Carnal people like fights. They like they like banging. No, no. Spiritual people, those that follow Jesus are gentle and tender and kind. Having the greatest time in the world. See, the people that were right behind Jesus are the happiest people of the ages. The people that follow Jesus are the sweetest people in the world. Keep sweet, keep sweet, this is the only way, ever the way to win the day if you just keep sweet. Right behind Jesus is a hive of honey. <laughs> Sweetness. To the coddle people like the bangs and the hits and the knocks. No. Jesus wants us one. Tis will will become one in our language. We speak the same thing. We're in agreement that ye all speak the same thing. What's in the heart comes out the mouth. So the only way that we can speak the same thing is to have the heart filled with Jesus and have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, he said that. Let this mind be in you it was also in Christ Jesus. And when we have the mind of Christ, we are one. But that comes through the work of the Holy Spirit, by the precious blood, the truth of Jesus Christ, that ye all speak and say the same thing. My wife, well, she's a reader. I'm not a reader. I don't read very much. It's hard for me to read. It's a labor for me to read. I, I don't, I'd like to like it. <laughs> well, I guess if I read too much, I'd get too many ideas. If I got too many ideas, how could he tell me what his idea was? See, if you got so many ideas in your head and all so many different things, it, he's got to filter through all that to ever get to what he has for you. See, if you've got all these things of man's ideas here, then he's got to filter all the way down to get to your heart. But in her reading, and she reads the great Christian's experiences, and she'll say, now, what God is having you preach is what they're preaching. That's what they preached 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Well, I said, that's encouraging, isn't it? Yes, yeah, he said, they're preaching the same thing God's revealed to you. I said, well, I'm glad. That helped me. Over and over for years. She said, you are preaching what the old time saints were preaching. Long time ago. See, and I don't read after people much. See, I just trust. Because I'm a servant. But all the men and women that walk behind Jesus, they are speaking the same thing. And it's sweet. And it's lovely. And it's compassionate. And it's full of of care. Look at the care. Look at it. It's, it's just running over. Look at it splashing around. Can you see it? Oh, it's great care. Look at it. 
Oh, the care is just flowing over like an artesian well. That just thrills me. Oh, I'm, it just thrills me all over. And these little books right behind it, they just are full of care and love and compassion and joy. They're all speaking the same thing. Yes, they're all talking the same thing. What is it? Doing God's will. Doing Jesus' will. Hearing as the Holy Ghost reveals God's will. That you all speak the same thing. It's wonderful to have the Lord reveal to your heart what we should say. It's marvelous to know what Jesus has to reveal to you and to me. I try my very most and my best to give God all the glory for every revelation he's ever given me. You know, to receive one revelation in a lifetime is great. To receive two is marvel. To receive three, well, that's, I don't know what the term would be. But to receive four revelations and five revelations and a half a dozen and a dozen and a hundred, it's, it's absolutely marvelous privilege to have God reveal just one thing to you. People say God reveals. The only way that you know God reveals anything is by the witness of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people say God told me this and God told me that, but there's no witness. There's any witness. Someone speaks, I said, oh, 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 before they got their mouth open, I received the witness. Yeah. And what they were going to say was from God. Yeah. I, I'm so thankful for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the revelation of Jesus. God sent me a, a thousand miles round trip to pray with a man in 1946. I wanted to go by train. He said, no, go by bus. See, when you walk with Jesus, you don't do what you want to do. When he told me to get in an airplane the first time, I didn't want to go in an airplane. I'd said for 50 years, because I was 52, I said, I don't want to get in a plane unless God tells me. I always put that on there. I didn't, I didn't want to get in a plane. I was afraid to get up because I fell out of a tree when Edward and Edwin were born that same year, and I almost killed myself. So I was frightened of of height. I didn't want to do that. But you don't do what you want to do. I wanted to go by train. It was easier. It looked like, he said, you're not going by train, you're going by bus. How did he tell you? By the Holy Spirit. See, when you're right behind Jesus, he tells you what to do. Well, how does he tell you? It's a mystery to me. <laughs> I guess we have to attend class all the time. Yes, we've got to pray and pray and pray and obey and become like a little child. If we don't become like a little child, we're not going to have the revelation of God. Father, I thank thee that thou hast withheld these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them unto babes. So God's revelation comes to the childlike, a babe. God reveals himself to those like little children. Who are they? They utterly depended upon God. That's who they are. All that are utterly dependent upon God are speaking the same thing. So God told me to go by train. No, told me to go by bus. I wanted to go by train. But it's much easier it looked like. But you know, by going by bus, as the Holy Spirit revealed to me, I had appointments with men and women from every 50 to 100 miles, all the way there and all the way back. <laughs> I had to, I marveled. I could see, of course. There wasn't any question when he told me bus. I just made arrangements to go by bus. But you see, the human in me wanted to go by the train. You don't go by what you want to do. You do what the Holy Spirit says to do. If you're right behind Jesus, because if you don't, then you're not with him. We just think we are. Oh, that really touched my heart. It's in my heart now. You see, we think we're behind him, but you see, if we're not doing what he says all the time, we're just kidding ourselves. No wonder he was heartbroken when he was here. He couldn't get hardly anybody to follow him. They want to be on the right hand, the left hand. If you're on the right hand, left hand, you've got to get right behind him. He said, follow me. You can't follow over here, over here. We've got to get behind him. See, his message comes right back where he is. His message always comes just back of him. He said, follow me. 
Isn't that simple? He said, go by bus. So he had appointments with me with men, women, all the way there, every 50 to 100 miles, all the way back. On the way back, he had the bus to break down so I could just get to everybody. <laughs> Everyone on the bus. He had to break down for five or six hours, so it just gave me time to get around the ball. Everyone, share with them all. I don't know what they thought of us. I expect they thought we were peculiar. <laughs> they might have. I was, I was happy. See, all the people who are right behind Jesus are like little children. Nothing. You look at them, you say, they don't seem to have much, but they just seem like they have everything. That's right. <laughs> Woo! I'll tell you, when you're with him, you've got the victory. Great joy. <laughs> Peace and love for everybody. Well, when we're arriving there, and I met Reverend Pumphrey, and he said to me, he said, when are we going to pray for Paul Kieser? Because that's what Jesus told me. He said, you're going to down in Poplar Bluff, Arkansas, and you're going to pray for Paul Kieser, who's steeped in sin in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You're going to pray for his conversion, his transformation. Well, sometimes, you know, you pray for people. We prayed for son Jack for 21 to 22 years before he was converted. But the Lord sent me over there 500 miles to meet Reverend Pumphrey, and we were going to pray for Paul Kieser. To be saved, he said to me, he said, when are we going to pray? And I said, I don't know. See, God had told me we're going to pray, but when we arrived at 9 o'clock, 8 or 9 o'clock, he said, what is the prayer? I said, I haven't any idea. Well, we were there and we were sharing in the kingdom of God. And long about midnight, the power of God fell and the gates opened. I said, we are now before the throne. And we came and we brought Paul Kieser, steeped in sin and filled it up. Pennsylvania, and I said, oh God, there he is, there he is, Lord, convict him, send the power and draw him, speak to him, woo his heart, he said, I'll do it, so he sent the power on him, about killed him, he just, God worked with him, to brought him almost to the edge of death, oh, I tell you, then he taught the Bible, when he got saved, amen. Well, I recall after we'd had that prayer, God had revealed to me to go. He revealed to me to go by bus. He revealed to me that the heavens were open, that we were together about three hours. And then he revealed to me, heard the prayer, and then God says, Holy Spirit, would him, and brought him into the kingdom of God. I remember the next day after we'd had the prayer, and we went over to the little 10 cent store. Reverend Pumphrey said, he said, I want to go over and get just a little ornament or a little trinket to take home to Rebecca and Barbara. They had one child at that time. And I said, well, I'd like to do that too, but I don't have enough money to, I, I owe $40 rent when I get home. And I'm living by total faith, <clears throat> still am. And instead of trusting the Lord for $40 rent now, I'm trusting him for about twenty-two or $23,000 a month for everything. And I said, I, I, I'd like to buy something for my wife and children, but I don't have any money. And I owe $40 rent when I get home in two or three days. So I went over to the Ben Franklin 10 cent store and we were looking in the front. I can still see us there. Had her overcoat on the month of February. And there was the English picture, oh, do, the doctor. There was uh, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and another. And there was the Lord's Supper, a uh, picture of the apostles and Jesus. There was a number of pictures there. And he said to me, we were both really interested, he said, which one is Judas? Well, I tried to figure out which one was Judas for years. Someone would say, this is Judas. No, another would say, this is Judas. But when he asked me, standing there on that street that day, just as soon as he did it, Jesus told me who he was. Just like that. Oh, just as plain and just as clear. The instant he said, which one's Judas? You know what the Holy Ghost said? He said, he with the money bag. Well, I'd read the Bible for years. See, instantly he told me the man with the money bag. I knew who Judas was. I said, here's Judas right here. Revelation. To believe, to trust, to obey, 
to speak the same thing. Because he said, go by bus, don't go by train. And so therefore, we were privileged to pray and a soul was touched. And a soul brought in by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a great delight. It's a great joy to follow Jesus and to hear his voice and to have him guide you, tell you what to do, because they all speak the same thing. That's a wonderful language, isn't it? That ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you. Now this is to the church. This is to the entire body of believers. This is to all Christendom. This is to all, not just the church at Corinth. Not just uh, the church of Parker City. But it's up at Muskegon, West Shore. It's where you live. It's where you are. This is to all the peoples of God. In every territory and area. That we all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among us. And yet so many churches are divided. One minister wanted me to pray about him going to a church. And, and I prayed and I said, you have five problems there. He found them all. On every one of them. Another man wanted me to pray for him about going to a certain church in a big city. And I said, well, when I pray, you've got three situations in that church. And sometimes this church has two divisions. Sometimes they have three. Sometimes there's four. And sometimes there's five. And sometimes there's six. But just one's one too many. Right. There cannot be a dividing spirit. There cannot be divisions in the church. Jesus' church is one. United. Oh, what a message this is. Because this is the will of God. This is the will of Jesus. You see, it's dangerous to be in the ministry. That's right. Amen. And not do God's will. But it's glorious to be in it and do God's will. It's a marvelous experience. But you see, if we in the ministry, the episcopacy, the papacy, and all the laity, if we're not speaking the same thing and doing God's will, it's dangerous and serious. Amen. He wants, he desires us to be a pure people because in that purity and in that oneness he will draw all men to Jesus by the power of his spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. That you all speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you. So my burden for many years, about 45 years, has been for the church, the professed church. My heart hurts. Does your heart hurt? Mine does. Right here. We cannot be divided. We cannot be divided. All the people right behind Jesus are never found to be divided. They're all united. United by the Holy Spirit. How? Because they follow Jesus in obedience. See, only the obedient heart is one. See, we have all kinds of people, all types of religions, and the people over in the foreign countries, they have hours to pray, and they pray maybe 7 in the morning, and 9 in the morning, and 10 in the morning, and 12, and 2, and 3, or 4, or 5, and they have times to pray, and they all pray, different religions. This will go through to glory. We need to be united. So that when we pray, we're together. And God answers for the glory of the Lord. Not for us, but for Jesus' sake. Amen. That our prayers go through. Only those who obey the Lord completely are one. Only those that obey consistently are one. So if we're going to speak the same thing, we must do everything and all things the Word says and the Holy Spirit leads. Isn't that tremendous? Yes. See, that is so great. And yet, it is so needed. Always, all those that obey the Holy Spirit speak the same thing. All those that follow Jesus doing God's will, they're saying the same. 
They're together. They're united. They're one. And their theme is love, holy love, God's love. Not a worldly love, not a sensual love, but a holy spiritual love. That's their life, is loving their neighbor as themselves. When you love your neighbors yourself, that's only through Jesus that that can be. Can't be otherwise. Only through the Holy Spirit. Only sanctified people can love their enemies and their neighbors as they love themselves. That's through Christ. That's through God's love. That is God's will. That is His will. That we love as He loves. And it's automatic. When we love as he loves and we're following Christ then we're speaking the same thing and we're not divided. We're together. There is a sweetness, a mellowness, a compassion, a care, an appreciation, a caution, a carefulness in all behavior and all words. That there be no divisions. So this burden that we have for the church the professed church. The burden is that the professed church would no longer dictate or design or plan, but that rather we would follow Jesus and let him give the plans. Let him give the guidance and the leading, for he is the head of the body. But he has no place to lay his head because he has hardly anyone that will follow and do his will. Only a few. Only a few. He said, few there be that will find it, that will do it. And the few are those that will die out to themselves and to the earth and to the world and to the will of man to do only God's will and follow Jesus. The obedient heart, the praying soul that obeys God, trusts God, becomes like a child, is the persons that he will lead and direct. And that's a high honor for anyone and everyone that's in that privileged group. And whosoever will may be. That's the wonder of it. There's no exclusions. It's whoever will be willing to pay the price. It's, it's for everybody. Not just for a select group. It's for whosoever will. It's one thing to be saved, but it's altogether more to follow Jesus after conversion. We, a lot of people think if they're saved, I've heard ministers say that after you're saved, your name is written down in heaven and sealed, you, you're sure for heaven, doesn't make any difference. I want you to know it's serious. It's serious. After you're saved, you must obey what the Holy Spirit says. You must follow the voice of Jesus. There isn't any other way. And to have people think that if they're saved, they're always saved. When Jesus said, not every one that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but it's he that doeth the will of my Father. How are we going to know God's will? By the Holy Ghost. Where are we going to be? Right behind Jesus. Right. To be no divisions among us. So my burden for the church for 45 years has been that we could somehow convince men and women to resist the devil and pray until they get the victory and die out to self and keep going with Jesus and carrying that cross. That's the inner death that's doing God's will. That there be no divisions among you. This group in the church have an idea, and this group in the church have an idea. We must pray till we have one idea, one leading. We must be sanctified until we are one. That's why the world doesn't, uh, they're kind of wondering about the church. Men and women of the world out there, they're wondering about the church. Because they don't see too much togetherness. But the true church is one. That's those souls that are right after Jesus doing his will, obeying everything he said. That's the secret. That is the secret. Is to obey exactly what God reveals to Jesus and Jesus to those that follow him. This must be, this is the only way is a life of obedience. And that's the life of inner death. We never obey until self is denied. Because self opposes the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The carnal nature opposes what God wills. 
And there must be no division whatsoever in the church. There must not be. If there is a dividing or a division, then God is grieved. The Holy Spirit is grieved. And we must pray so that we will be wholly sanctified, that we will be one, as God and Jesus are one. Isn't it a remarkable thing that this 10th verse is a perfect parallel with the 17th chapter of St. John? It's a perfect parallel. Jesus prayed it a long time before this was written. But the Lord spoke to Paul and had this letter written to the church that there be no divisions among you. But now there were then. In chapter 3, he said, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? said, I can't speak to you as to spiritual people. Unto carnal, unto us babes, just starting out. He said, there's carnality here, envying, strife, and division. It wasn't to be, but it was. Let us be determined, every one of us in this building, by the grace of God, that we'll resist Satan and this old carnal nature and come to an experiential knowledge with God until we are like him. And never get discouraged and never give up. Keep persevering on, not in struggle, but in seeking his will. Striving to enter into the kingdom of heaven. With all there is within us, let us go forward. There is a pain in somebody's side. It's kind of very difficult, isn't it? It's an awful thing. It's near the heart. It's under it just a little ways to the left. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, behold, be healed, be well through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Be thou healed in the name of Jesus. This awful pain that you have just under the ribs. Let there be no division among you. That's his church. That's the professed church. That's the people that say they're the church. See, when we have a bulletin board out in front of a church that says the church, we, that church has taken on a tremendous responsibility. Amen. Every one of that church, they better be one. Every one of that church better be one because we're going to all come up before the judgment seat of Christ one of these days. We're all going to be there. And there won't be any escapes. It doesn't make any difference how much money people have or how much prestige they have. They'll all be there. And we'll all be judged out of the book. And we better, we better now hear and say, by the grace of God, I want my heart to be a pure heart. Because only the pure in heart are in one agreement. Only the pure in heart. All the pure in heart are one. They're speaking the same thing. All the pure in heart. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He said, they shall see him, because they're pure at heart. And we must press continually to keep our hearts pure, dying out of this carnal nature and all these evil temptations that so come upon man and woman that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. Now, after he said there's no divisions, that were to speak the same thing, he had more to say. He said, that ye be. He didn't say probability. He said, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. That's the mind of Jesus. That's the mind of Christ. We must be of the same mind. We must have the same as Jesus had, that love of the Father, the love for our neighbor. And do exactly as he says, no more and no less. So he wants us to be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And the more carnal we are, the more trouble we have with this. If we're cleansed of carnality, we appreciate it. 
We're in, we enjoy it because it's by his mercies and through the blood that it can be. It's not by any merit that we have. I have no merit. I haven't anything to boast about save on the cross of Christ the glory. But this is God's will that we be perfectly joined together. That touches my heart. Perfectly joined together in the same mind. The mind of Jesus. His mind flows right behind him into the persons that follow him. Follow me. And we're connected in him as we obey him. Obedience. Now disobedience is sin. And there's a disconnection. There is a, there is a darkness in disobedience. The heart that obeys the Lord, the light of the world is within them. They're like lights. Those that obey Jesus are filled with compassion. And they go out in the byways and the highways to compel the people to come in. A sweet, gentle invitation. Not by a harsh, carnal method. It's saying you need, you must get saved now. But we simply say, Jesus invites you to come. You either accept him or you reject him. You accept him, then life eternal as we follow by faith. If we reject him, darkness and destruction as a result. That you be perfectly. Now anything that's perfect, it's, it's together. It fits every way. How perfect God wants us in him. The motor in my automobile, if it's not actually really perfect, those pistons aren't perfect, it won't run right. It'll soon stop. Everything in the alternator has to be perfect or I stop. Every part of the automobile in the transmission, the differential, must be perfect. And if it isn't perfect, it whines. So you can always tell when there's carnality by the whining. Whining, complaining, murmuring. Isn't that a situation? You can always tell the differential. There's a defect in it, it whines. Sounds terrible. So when we're not all God wants to be, we whiners, we whine, we complain, we murmur, and we find fault. Everyone that's carnal is like that. Those that follow Jesus and do his will, by God's grace, do not do that. The Lord helps them over it. He gives them the strength to overcome it. See, it's not in man to do it. It's in his abiding. It's in the abiding in Jesus, obeying. You see, the secret of abiding in Jesus is obeying. Obeying what he says. Communion. Prayer, the word of God, rejoicing, witnessing, telling the good news that Jesus is Lord, he can save us, and he can sanctify us, and he can bring us perfectly together in the same mind. It must be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. Those light bulbs, they don't work. This light bulb, if it weren't perfect, we wouldn't have any light in here. If these bulbs weren't what they ought to be, if all the wiring wasn't perfect, it's dangerous. You see, we're trying to get by spiritually with imperfections and think we can do something and have a great revival. Great something. Just as soon as he finds a people that will follow him and do his will, he is at work. He does marvelously. We want what we want without the cost. We want what we want without the death. Without the inner crucifixion. It must be that we come down and give up everything. Forsake all. As long as you're holding on to things, you're going to be in division. As long as you hold on to the earthly things, we're not going to speak the same thing. That you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind. The mind is where the thoughts are. 
thinking is in the mind. It's a tremendous thing to have a good mind. Well, there is something worse than death, and that's a sick mind. You take anyone that's sick in the mind, it's almost worse than death. Anyone that's mentally ill, it's almost worse than death. They can't remember and they're confused, there's uh, upheaval. See, the mind is a model of thing. And if we play tricks with the mind, it's dangerous. I was led one day to a man I got there the day he was at the end. He couldn't go any farther. He said, he said, this is the last day I can make it. And God got to him that day. He'd played tricks with his mind for years, and he couldn't retain anything more than 3 to 10, 15 seconds. It was gone. He'd played tricks with the mind. And he was a brilliant person, very intellectual. But he played tricks with the mind. Be careful with your mind. See, many people have mental illness because of the sins of the fathers and the mothers going back to the fourth generation. It's a deposit in the blood and in the tissues. Some people are sick in mind because of certain situations that they have been in. Sometimes we have sick minds because of certain things we take into the body, on drugs, on other things. Sometimes we have mental sickness because we press in the flesh instead of rest in the spirit. That you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And this is nothing to laugh at. This is serious. Because to be mentally sick is almost worse than death. And to know him who follow him. See, there's many religions. There are many cults. There are many people that think they have the truth. They're sure they are, but they're deceived. It's easy to be deceived. Most people will be deceived, according to the scripture. Do you know that? It says it very plain. There's only one way that you know that you're not deceived. And that is by the witness of the Holy Spirit right here. Not up here, but right here. It's the only way you know the truth. You, have, you must have the inner witness. And if you do not have the inner witness, die until you get it. It doesn't make sense what anybody says. The great intellectuals could tell you anything. But I want to tell you, God called me 61 years ago in the inner voice. Right here. It's there now. And he said, you belong to me. I will use you in my kingdom someday. And he has revealed to me that we must forsake all to follow Jesus. He has revealed to me that we must wait until he leaves before we do anything. We must do as God leads by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Not what we read, not what we think, because most things are not led of the Holy Spirit in this world. Now, if the angels were here, they'd been a amen and almost shake the walls of this place. There's been very little since creation that's in the will of God. The only way that you know a true prophet of God is by the witness of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you can tell. You can't tell by the beautiful language. You can't tell by the way they speak. You can't tell by the way they look. But I'll tell you one thing, that a true prophet of, of God will live a holy life with his companion, with his children. I mean a holy life. Every true prophet of God will have one wife. As Jesus said so. He said it right here in this scripture. More than one place. Every true prophet of God will be kind and gentle and sweet to his companion and to his children and reverence them and discipline them in a Christian way. Every true prophet of God will have the fruit of the Spirit in his life. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, meekness. Against us, there is no law. Every true prophet of God loves everyone in the world and never finds fault with anybody. Doesn't criticize persons. Now they ought to do this or that. No. Because a true prophet of God will not look at the weaknesses of others. He'll love everyone. Oh, he'll preach the truth and he'll cut until we think we're blistered. 
but he walks with Jesus and he is compassionate. And we're to be brought into the same mind, the same judgment. Speaking the same thing. And the only way you can tell whether you are really following Jesus is by the love that flows from the Father into your heart. Right here. Right here. It's the only way you can tell. Not what you think. Not what you know about. It's whether or not the reality of his abiding, that's in my heart now, comes right in here by the witness of the Holy Spirit. And this is the way. He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. My sheep follow me. It's right here. It's not the voice that speaks here. It's within the heart. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. It comes not by observation. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The only way that you can tell when you're walking with Jesus is that you love everyone in all the world. Jesus loves you. There's great love there. and You don't violate the law of love by finding fault with anybody. Because if you find fault and murmur, you've violated the law of love. And we're to be joined in the same mind, the same judgment. And by the witness of the Holy Spirit only can we know we're in God's will. There's no other way. See, the Holy Spirit witnesses. It bears witness. When did you learn this? I was taught as I walked with the Lord. I was taught as the Holy Ghost came upon me. And I'm still learning. I'm a beginner. I'm a beginner. I've only been following him 50 years and five months and some days. I'm a beginner. We're all in the same class. You know, a lot of times people will say, no, I said we're all in the same class. Someone said, you mean we're all in the same class? I said, yes, we all are. Everyone that's with Jesus is in the same class. That's everyone. There's no divisions. There's no, uh, here's a group, here's a group. No, no, not with Jesus. Everyone is in the same class, and that's the class of the trusting hearts. The trusting hearts. The class of the trusting hearts are the childlike and the obedient. That's the precious ones that are following Jesus. And there's just a few, according to the word. Strive ye to enter into straight gate, for many shall seek and shall not be able. 13th chapter of Luke. Enter ye into straight gate, for broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be that go in thereat, for straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And few there be that find it. And everyone that's following Jesus is hated and despised in this world. He said so right here. Everyone that is following Jesus is hated and despised. Not because of our weakness. But because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the carnal men hate anyone that's filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. They, they'll analyze them. They'll find fault with them. They'll try to catch their words and give them harm. When you follow Jesus, you become one. One like he is one with the Father. See, all that follow Jesus are becoming as God and Christ, perfectly joined together in the same mind. See, this is God's word. It's not mine. I'm simply giving you what the word says because I know it's true. See, anything that I think, see, I've got to put that aside. I'll be talking to someone, I want to say, to, the Holy Ghost says, stop right there, don't say that. How many has been with me when that happened? Hold your hands up high. He said, wait, don't say that. I said, what? Oh, yeah, you walk with God here. He said, don't say that. He wants us to say what he wills to be said. And that is precious because that doesn't hurt anybody. It may blister us, but it won't hurt us. <laughs> It'll help us. It'll lift us up. And so God speaks to the church and said that there be no divisions among you, that you all speak the same thing, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And in the same judgment. 
This is a beautiful place to dwell, and we must die to dwell there. We die here. We die inwardly. It's the inner death. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if a man's going to follow me, he has to deny himself, take up the cross. And then he said, follow. We don't follow until we do that. Amen. Our sins can be forgiven. They can be blotted out from us as far as the east is from the west. And never take one step after Jesus as far as we go. We must go on. After conversion, after transformation, after the new creation, we must go on unto perfection. And most all theologians do not believe it. But it's still true. It's still true. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And in the same judgment. To have the mind of Christ. The mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh how unworthy I am. I'm unworthy. I'm needy. I am nothing. I could see years ago that. What we really had to do before God could do anything with us is become nothing. If a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. See, anyone that thinks himself to be something has deceived themselves. Because if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, I could see right away the thing that he wants us to do is become nothing. How are we going to become nothing? Just lose all, leave all. Just follow Jesus. Just let him be everything. Let us be nothing. Then he will indwell us. And lead us to the truth. The will of God. Lead us to the purpose of God. There's nothing else to live for in the world. Right. There's anything else. Right. That's the only persons that will glorify God. Are those that are following Jesus. See denominations are working hard. Religious people are working hard. Let's, let's follow Jesus and let him do the work. Yeah. Through us. The great work is not our work. It's his Holy Spirit work in us. As we obey him. As we trust him. As we follow him. So the real evidence. Jesus said by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye shall have love one for another. Love. So in love there's no hate. There's no, there's no resentment. There's no criticism. There's no fault finding. There's no murmuring. There isn't any shoving this aside or hurting this one. In love there is that precious care. And wonder work of God in Christ. Amen. It's in him. It's not in us. I am nothing. It, he is everything. Amen. And I have to fight the devil every step. The devil fights me harder now. The last five to ten years that I ever could tell you. I can't tell my wife. My beloved wife. How hard. How, how the devil fights me. How he battles me. But you can. You know right away if you're going with him. You don't have a struggle with him. If you're going with him. You don't have a struggle with him. But if you're going with God, that's when you have the battle. That's right. And it's every step of the way. As long as you're going the same direction as the devil, you don't meet up with him. You don't know anything about the pile of Satan. But if you're going with Jesus, he's right there to buffet you, storm you, accuse you, and tempt you with such severity to try to get you to fall away into the double-minded life. The double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, the Bible says. The double mind is the person that's been saved, he has a spiritual mind, he has a carnal man, mind, and they just war one against another all the time. The, the spirit of the Lord will say, do this, and the, the carnal says, oh, no, no, no. So it just pulls us back. This is why people are in such anguish. They don't know why they're not happy. It's because they're double-minded. So the carnal mind, you see, and the spiritual mind, it's a double mind, and there you have conflict and division. The very thing he said we're not to have. Well, this is a big message for a little fellow that doesn't know anything, isn't it? Wonderful. <laughs> See, I don't have... You would say, well, you've got written down there. Well, I've got written some scriptures there. I just have one. That's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> I'm still on the same verse. And I, I know so little about it. I don't profess to be anything. I profess to be nothing. And I'm in need of prayer. I've told people for many years that I need prayer more than anyone I know. I've told people that for 40 years. I say, you mean you need prayer? I said, yes, I need it more than anyone because I'm the weakest. When you find out you're weak, you're going to trust him. If you think you're not weak, you're going to try to think you can do something. And then you're tripped up then. You're tripped up then. So we're utterly dependent upon him to do his will completely and entirely. 
So he said, I beseech you in the name of Jesus Christ that you all speak and say the same thing. That there be no divisions among you. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Well, I know you've been patient with me here all these hours. And a lot of people I, uh, I see are resting on that promise. I know it's not easy to sit one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. And yet, my granddaughter's still sitting over here. And a while ago, she was listening real good. And she's still looking at me. And she's five years old. Sometimes we have little children. They'll come up and say, I like the way you preach. This little thought's like that. That's a great compliment to have a child want to talk to you. So we're grateful. And we have had waitings upon God when the children would almost cry to get on the front seat and they'd come and they were already taken. And the waitings upon God, they have to come early to get a front seat because everyone wants on the front seat. Because you get the most on the front. Farther back you get, it takes God's grace for us to get it there because the powers there are raging so hard, they'll just grab it. They just wrestle all around you. You don't know it. No, no. Father, where you are, you just have to labor your best to get it with all your might. What? Yes, sir. I want to tell you, you've got to work harder in your heart to get what I've said than 220s hit that touchdown line. They have to put everything that got it into it to get it. You have to work that hard in your heart to get what I preach to you. You'll not get it. Because the powers of hell will not allow you. The principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, this world, this is high places, will not let you, will not allow you, unless you persevere with all there is within you. And I want you to know this, that the people will hear that which is false, but they seldom ever hear that which is true. See, all the world goes after the false things. They go to the thousands and the millions. But only a handful goes after the will of God. They don't want to pay the price. They want their own mind and their own way. There's not very many going with God. How long have I known this? For 50 years. Who revealed it to you? The Son of the Most High God. My mother said when I was born, the Holy Ghost fell on me and her. I didn't know it until I was 40 years and three months old. I have three of my brothers here. Uh, you've known about that, haven't you? And I said, Mother, I said, that's serious. That's serious. But she said, the Holy Ghost fell on me as I came from her body. So I want you to pray for me that we'll be faithful and love everyone as Jesus loves us and to tell us the truth. And that truth is, is to do God's will. And the only way we know God's will is to love this word and pray and let the Holy Spirit guide us all the way. Don't get sidetracked on ideas or theories or philosophy. Don't get sidetracked on this beautiful thing and this beautiful thing because it'll sidetrack us and the multitudes will be lost because we don't know how to hear. And he cried, let him that has an ear, let him hear. He was so heartbroken because they couldn't hear what he said. So God revealed to me 50 years ago a few people will hear and few people will follow. He's revealed to me that only one, that's on the average over the world, that's only one in 500 young men and women will hear me in their heart. Because of the powers of the air will rage so hard to draw them to the things of self, to the things of the likes of the world, and only one in the average, world over, one in 500 will be able to hear because of the powers of hell raging. Now, if you're determined then by God's grace you can hear if with all your heart you truly seek him. If you will, it's up to you. It's up to the individual heart. I can't do it for my brothers, my wife, my children, my loved ones, my neighbors. I can't do it. I have to fight the devil and resist him continually. The Bible teaches that this way is a warfare. It's a warfare. And I want to tell you, the closer you get to the victory, the harder the battle, but the more glorious, the wonder of his work in your heart. And the marvelous gifts and grace that he sheds abroad in your heart. Oh, to be holy unto him and to be pure and undefiled before him. And this is the ultimate, is to be one mind, the same judgment, speaking the same thing, doing God's will. Now, I never heard this preached anywhere, but here it is in the Bible. It's true. It is true. And he invites us to lose our life. He said, 
He that will find his life will lose it. But he that will lose his life for my sake and the gospel shall find it. So we, I lost it. I just gave it away. I lost everything. I left everything. Broke the heart of my father and my mother. Because they spent thousands of dollars on my education. Wanted me to become a pastor in a great metropolis. Like any and every parent wants their children to excel and to become famous. To become known. But see, sometimes God's will is to become nothing and unknown. I will never be known. I'll only be known as the least servant. I seek nothing but the will of God. And I have to die to do it. Those that follow Jesus are not known in this life. They never have been known. They don't seek to be known. Those that follow Jesus Christ have the inner witness in their heart. See, and anyone here of a strange, a strange religion tonight would feel in their heart a quiver or a question or a bewilderment. I want you to know that Jesus loves you just like he loves me. Because we're saved by grace. Because we're all the same. He loves everybody alike. There's no difference. But you see, we can be deceived. And most people are deceived. According to the Bible. The only ones that's going to enter in are those that hear the voice of Jesus and follow what he said. That's right here. That's in my heart now. That's right there. The voice of Jesus is within you. Right here. That's where it is. Right here. That's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> well, I need more. I have so little. <laughs> I need more of his love and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's within the heart. It's within the soul. But we must die. We must be inwardly dying to do God's will. Or we'll do our will that lives in the flesh. It's a novel tussle. The devil works his hard to keep us in the flesh. We must press up into the Holy Spirit. Not after the things of the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's in Romans the other night. I read a little about it, and before I knew it, I was preaching on that verse. I didn't know I was going to, but I did. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And I didn't know I was going to preach on it, but I did. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And I want, I want so much, by God's grace, through his mercy, to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. It's so easy to be sidetracked, to be in spiritual air and not know it. But you know in your heart, and that's where you really know, and it says, we shall be taught of God. He said, they shall be taught of God. Not in... That doesn't mean necessarily seminaries and universities. To be taught of God is to walk in the Spirit and let the Holy Ghost teach us. We're taught of the Holy Spirit, not of man, but of the Holy Ghost. And they shall be taught of God. That's the Holy Spirit. Isn't that great? And he tells us a marvelous thing that connects right up with that over in 1 John. That's a wonderful scripture. It's in verse 27 of the second chapter. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, it is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So when God leads and guides, he teaches. They shall be taught of God. He teaches by the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Somebody has back troubles right here. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, behold, be healed. For the glory of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost shall be taught of God, shall be taught of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is to be praised and honored as the Holy Spirit of God that Jesus sent into the world will come into the hearts of those that follow Jesus with all there is within them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there's no place to quit on such a message that so we just have to stop. That's the way it is in a meeting. You never come to the close. You just have to quit. It never ends. In the kingdom of God, you can't just say we're going to do this. If you're following him, now if you program it, well, you can do it the way you want. But if you do his will, you just it's just on and on. There's no end. And so I trust you'll be encouraged and strengthened and helped. 
and leaning upon him and letting him have his way with you. And that by God's grace, that we will do what he says and not be sidetracked and not get into spiritual error, which is so easy. Well-meaning people, so easy to get there. It's by God's grace that we can miss it. We're not to think ourselves to be something when we're nothing. We're to note that it's through the mercies of God we're saved in the Christ, his sacred blood, the work of the Holy Spirit, the truth. We're sanctified by the truth, by the power of the blood. And this is what we cry to the peoples of the church, that we will be inwardly cleansed and to be one people in one heart. Thank you, Father, for thy presence, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit, and that all of these, every one is so dear and so precious. Every man, every woman, every boy and girl, I pray that we will not let the enemy trick us and deceive us, but that we will be pressing and obeying as a child and faithful to thee and to one another. Because the best friend we have is thee, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to lead us and to teach us and to tell us how to proceed with thanksgiving. So unto thee be the glory and the praise and the honor now and always that all these, O Lord, be built up in the most precious faith and be a holy follower of Jesus, becoming like thee, knowing that it's in thee all things consist and abound. Dear Father, in Jesus' name we give thee the glory, thus the praise and the honor Oh, Jesus, our Savior. Hallelujah. See, in some way, but the Holy Spirit put this, uh, this gospel here, this verse into every heart. Because when you were here, Jesus, they didn't hear what you said. Hardly anyone heard what they said. And you said to the church people, to the people that tithed and prayed and fasted, you said to them, you said the publicans and the harlots will go in the kingdom before ye eat. 